What's up y'all, it's Shuffle and today we're going to do a stalling guide, so if you ever wanted to learn how to stall for content, I'm kidding. We're going to learn how to stall to recover in Darkest Dungeon, then stay tuned. Of course, before we get started, we have to do all the channel plugging stuff, so if you enjoy the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts down below, and then make sure you check out the box below, the dis description box, jeez, I can't even say it, for uh, Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon for a bunch of cool stuff and a lot of cool people. So thanks for doing all of that, and we'll get started with the video. Actually, I do have to make one more plug. It's not for myself. This is for Nick, aka Flagellant Best Girl on YouTube. Nick is a very cool person in the community. One of my favorite people. You see them in Discord quite often, and probably my streams as well. And Nick makes really awesome videos featuring usually some crazy challenge runs for Darkest Dungeon, but Nick is also a very experienced and knowledgeable player who likes to give pretty much anyone that talks to him any information that he can think of, so he helped quite a bit with this guide, especially, or I should say specifically, the mechanics and some of the finer points that I myself did not know. So thank you to Nick, and if you have not subscribed to him, you should. The first question we're going to ask is, why stall at all in Darkest Dungeon? The reason you want to stall in this game is because recovery moves, by and large, are pretty weak compared to the monster attacks. Even someone like Vestal, who can heal consistently for 8, 9, 10 at higher levels, which is pretty good. A lot of the monsters can do upwards of 10, 15, sometimes 20 or 30 damage if they crit, and Vestal can't really one-to-one -one heal that, right? So you have to stall to get the most out of healing. The next part that's really nice about stalling is if you have a stress healer and you're stalling to heal stress, this can save you a lot of money once you get back to town. The reason for this is because you will not need to use stress facilities like the Abbey and the Tavern to heal stress. Instead, you can heal it while you're in dungeons, and that saves you a bit of money over the long run. The final reason to stall is really just because it's convenient. Most enemy groups, which we call mashes in this game, have at least one decent stall target on them. The only exception to this is probably the Warrens, because a lot of the enemies are just threatening overall, but even then there's still a couple things you could stall on if you wanted to. Usually the ideal stall target is an enemy that can't do a lot of damage or stress damage to you, but also takes a while to kill, so usually the enemy tanks are the ones that fall into this category. Units like the Shield Skeleton, or Pelagic Guardian, or even the Fungal Scratchers, once they have no setup for them, are pretty decent stall targets. I would be remiss not to mention Nick's favorite stall target in the Wield, at least, and those are the Slimes, that can endlessly summon themselves. I personally find these a bit dangerous because sometimes they can just summon a whole wave of dudes and pop off, and suddenly you're in the Endless Harvest, but you're in the Wield. But if you have a very solid team that has some good recovery, then this is still a great set of enemies to stall on. One final point before I move on is that when you're stalling, this probably goes without saying, but you want to make sure that your team can outheal the damage and stress damage you're taking from whatever enemy remains. If you cannot do this, then you shouldn't be trying to stall. Now for the most important part of the video, how do we actually stall? How do we accomplish this feat? The short end of it is you have to use two moves that have the potential to deal damage. It does not matter if you hit a corpse, it doesn't matter if you hit for zero, it doesn't matter if you miss, as long as you basically attack twice, in a round, you will delay reinforcements. Also of note for this same point is you will know that reinforcements are coming if after the turn that you just had, one of your units shouts something like, we must finish this quickly. And once you see something like that, then you know reinforcements are inbound. It doesn't matter if you're on turn four or turn 400. If you're doing this correctly, reinforcements will never show up. As long as you're using two moves that have the potential to deal damage, then you can use the other two characters to heal up to your heart's content. One caveat to this is that each enemy has its own reinforcement timer, and that's just too much to go over in this one video, but Nick did provide a link if you wanted to go find it yourself. Now for some mechanics on reinforcements themselves, if you're fighting a size 2 enemy, which is a larger enemy, then you will not have the chance to get reinforcements. It doesn't matter if you're not using two offensive actions a turn. As long as it's one size 2 enemy, you can stall as long as you want. The next point to make is that you cannot get reinforcements if the enemy side of the field has three small enemies. This isn't usually something you want to stall against, I can't really think of too many comps besides maybe Bone Rabble and Slimes that you could stall against when it's that many things. But if you do want to stall when there's three enemies, then you can try it. The final point to make about mechanics and reinforcements is that if your side of the field has one or two heroes remaining, you will never get reinforcements. Because of this, it actually makes it possible to solo or duo most parts of the game. To wrap up this video, we're going to talk about the best moves to stall with, and it's a pretty comprehensive list here, but obviously the first thing you should probably have are healing moves, because why are you stalling if you don't have healing moves? 
The next are low damage stun moves. This makes Dazzling Light from Vessel pretty good, even though she's probably healing in the stall phase. And then things like Uppercut also get pretty good. I guess Blackjack would be another pretty solid choice here, but something like Hands from the Abyss with Occultus hits a bit too hard and crits too frequently to be that good at stalling, but it is something you could use. If you want to combo Weakening Curse with Intimidate on some kind of heavy damage dealer, so if you have Leper and Occultus, this is another great combo because you can put someone's damage down to minus 80 or even 100%, which means they're just tickling you at that point. Some important info as per Nick is that with Occultist, Vulnerability Hex does not delay reinforcement, which is a bit strange. However, Solo does, so I don't really know why that's a thing, but apparently that happens. A move most of us talk trash about, Grape Shot Blast, is actually a very, very good stalling move. The reason is, you can leave Grape Shot at rank 1, so it has horrendous accuracy, does almost no damage, and that leads to some prime stalling time. If you're against a size 2 enemy, and you have someone else to cover healing in your stalling phase, then something with Antiquarian using Flash Powder Spam is really good at debilitating large threats. I probably should have led with this, but the thing that most people will probably gravitate towards is having stuns on top of damage over time. If you are stalling against a tanky unit, then being able to stun them and then measure out their remaining HP by hitting them with Blight and Bleed consistently is one of the easiest and most natural feeling forms of stalling in the game. As I alluded to before, the reason stalling is so important is just because recovery in this game is pretty limited, and a lot of people that feel like they need Vestal or Jester on most of their teams in order to succeed should probably check out how to stall. One thing that I love a lot in what Nick said in his write-up is that by learning how to stall in this game, it opens up your potential for teams. So instead of having to take, you know, dedicated healers for every single comp, if you're able to stall consistently, you can run random stuff like having characters that have self heals, or having something as small as Antiquarian's heal, or Plague Doctor's, you know, plus three heal at champion. So being able to run those and stall to get the most use out of them is really fun, and it's actually pretty rewarding as a playstyle. I know stalling is not everyone's favorite form of playing, it's not something they enjoy watching, but honestly with how difficult this game can be, and in some of the challenge runs, being able to stall is usually the difference between winning and losing. Stalling may sound like a lot to do, or it may sound a bit complicated, but it honestly isn't. It's just uh, the strategy and the setup that you have to do, and a lot of teams can pull it off pretty effectively. So once you understand what to do, it's honestly going to become second nature. I think that stalling is probably the missing piece to most people's puzzles when they talk about getting better at the game, because I've made a lot of videos, I've had a lot of people say, hey, Shuffle, you know, I've tried this, I follow this, and I feel like I'm getting better, but I'm still getting my butt kicked, so what's, you know, what's the difference? Where's the skill gap here? And I'm not saying that to sound like an arrogant jerk or something like that, but honestly, it usually comes down to stalling. So if you're not stalling in your games, give it a try. All right, all that's going to do for this one, so special thanks to Nick once again. Make sure to check out his channel and his stuff and say hi. Say that you appreciated his input in this video. As for myself, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments. Check the box below for all the cool links as we always talk about. As for what's coming up next, I do have some guides planned alongside the other normal content and the viewer runs and stuff like that. One guide that we're going to cover that I'm actually pretty excited to do is a hidden stats guide. It's focusing on those background mechanics that the game just never tells you what it is or how to deal with it, like the percentage chance of nighttime ambush, the hit cap, and a bunch of other stuff that I don't have in front of me. So if you're looking forward to that, then keep it tuned here. And as I always say, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.